Hello, this is a tutorial in where we will attempt to explain AAA in under 5 minutes. Before we begin, we will give a brief explanation of very crudely made animation. For this lab, we will attempt to set up a router to be a AAA client requesting usernames and passwords from a AAA server. In concept, what we have is this. A server is connected to a switch, which then connects to the router. We then have a computer connected to the switch. What we have now is a computer which acts as a telnet or SSH client. When the computer attempts to establish a connection, the router requests passwords from the server to check for authentication. That is the basic concept occurring in our lab. However, we have changed the setup a little by virtualizing the server into the computer through VMware. Essentially, we put a server running using the computer's resources. By fusing the two together, we save both space and money while still accomplishing the same thing. Now we will move on to the lab. The first step is to create the server. On the home screen, click Create a new virtual machine custom and then hit next. Hit next on the next screen and then select your Windows Server 2012 disk image file. The operating system used will be Windows 7 64 bit. We will enter the product key later. Give your machine a name and continue. We will be using two processors with 8GB of memory for this. Make sure the network type is set to bridge networking. Everything else can be left at default. Before finishing, make sure to uncheck the power on after installation. After creating our machine, we need to edit the virtual machine to use the physical drive. Click No when the message occurs. Now onto the actual installation. Hit Next and then Install Now. Enter the product key, select the GUI installation, accept the terms, and then select Custom Installation, and hit Next. Then wait for the installation to finish, which we have sped up for this purpose. After the automatic restart, enter a complicated password for login to the server. Now that your server has been installed, it's time to configure it. After logging in, the first thing we need to do is to give our server an IP address and a DNS server. After that, we need to add our roles and services. Hit next until you reach the server role selection. Select Active Directory Domain Services and the Network Access Policy Server and install them. Next, create your domain for the server. After setting up a password for recovery, it will install and automatically restart. Once that's done, we will begin setup for the users. The first step in this process is to open Active Directory Users and Computers. After that, we will create a security group under Users. After that, we will create our user and password. After assigning the user to the group, start the performance counters on our server and we will move on to the Network Access Policy Server. For this aspect, we will go under Network Policy Server. First, add our client by inputting a name, IP address, and shared key. After that, go under Policies and create a new connection request policy. For conditions, we only need the client-friendly name to be the router. Make sure to change the attribute to username under Configure Settings and everything else can be left to default. Last part of the Network Policy Server is setting up the Network Policy itself. For conditions, we need both friendly name and the group we created for this to work. Under Configure Authentication Methods, make sure to check the box next to Unencrypted Authentication in addition to the defaulted one. Everything else can be left defaulted. Once that is finished, the last step to the Network Policy Server is registering it into the Active Directory. Once that's done, we have to configure the router. To summarize the commands being entered, it is essentially giving a hostname and a domain name for creating an RSA key, which we will then use for SSH. After that, we gave a command to enable contact between client and server. Now that it's all done, we have to test it. The first thing we can use is SSH, and the second we will use by a con console connection. As you can see, we can get in using the username and password created. However, using a random username and password does not work, showing yes, it does keep out the people that don't know the username or password.